All right, so we're recording. And so Ms. Barbara and I are going to walk you through uh, our presentation this evening. Uh, you are, this is a webinar format in which um, we can we can talk and we can chat with you, although uh, the attendees, you're muted and, and you're just like, it's watching a video. However, with the Q&A is up. So if you have questions, we will actually um, go through our presentation and then slowly we'll stay and answer any question you have. Uh, we love this evening. Usually it comes with a tour, um, but this, you know, this year we're not coming with a tour. However, I will say to you, there's not much to see as far as the sixth grade. Uh, if you've driven by West Lane or been on 73rd Street and, and looked at some of us, uh, we have our old sixth grade hallway is starting to be demolished. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, amazing because we just moved out of there about eight days ago. So our construction crews are, are, are flying through and we have right now our sixth grade is in our South gym. And actually they've done a really good job. The teachers have of really making some nice temporary spaces for everybody. And our plan is for next year, October the 29th, 2021, is for your children to move into brand new sixth grade digs. And I tell you what, if you have not had a chance to see, uh, check out Facebook mm -hmm. uh, or check out our social media and see the pictures of our current uh, brand new seventh and eighth grade wing, it is Beautiful. amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just, I can't speak enough for the design team and our students have been amazed. In fact, our students right now are trying out um, LGI furniture, which is a little bit more of a comfort furniture in a big open space. And so it's a, like a work area. It is like, it's just, it's just amazing. I know some of you have seen us because of course you have children already here at West Lane. Um, so, and I, I, right now it looks like about 58% of you, this is your first middle school experience. Let me tell you, we have a lot of middle school experience on our staff. Yeah. So one of the things that I that I always felt is our most important job here in the middle school is to bring along our fifth graders, parents and students, because I've always found that the parents are a little more nervous than the students are. The students are excited. Mm -hmm. The parents are nervous. And, I, and, and so I always tell the kids when I visit them, in their fifth grade classes, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in with them the week before spring break, as we say, don't be nervous. But right now, parents, I'm telling you, don't be nervous. Because uh, yep. Barbara and I have a combined, what, some years? A million and some years experience at the middle school just <laughs> between ourselves. And our staff has so many years of experience in helping that transition for sixth grade, uh, from fifth grade to sixth grade. I will tell you, uh, one of the most important things I've ever heard from a middle school principal uh, is that sometimes you'll, you'll want to give the students a little more rope or a little more like freedom early on because it's a new school. Don't do that. Get them, get them as tight as you can early on. Because um, now, by now, fifth grade parents, you're the most experienced parents in a school. They're the most experienced kids in a school and you can give them some freedom because you're going to one teacher all the time. And you're going to, you know, your, you know, your, you know, your kids, friends, all of that. Well, next year, early on, they start meeting a whole bunch of new friends. Mm -hmm. So we start meeting. Um, so Fox Hill starts meeting Crooked Creek, starts meeting Willow Lake. Those friend groups start to, to intermix and you start meeting lifelong friends here in the middle school and that carry on over to North Central. But also you're starting to navigate eight or nine teachers that you might have on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's really important to really keep them close, ask them how they're doing, ask them how things went, really checking in on, on all the pieces that we have, only because um, they, will, they will sometimes get lost in the shuffle sometimes as a sixth grader. Uh, they'll start to think, well, it's not like fifth grade, if I don't know who to talk to. This is a, an area in which we start to have some anxiety come up only because they're unsure of how to navigate it. Now the teachers are here for us, where the adults are here. Um, but I know that sometimes the kids have questions about that. So please keep them even closer. Don't, don't kind of let them go on their own. Now, as the second semester, second semester starts, the students start getting more comfortable. Then you can start your understanding of what middle school is. Middle school is so different from elementary, but it is pretty easy to catch. It's pretty easy to catch on both kids and parents. Usually, 
the parents don't catch on as quick as the kids do, but you know, they live it every day and don't feel bad about that. And if you ever have any questions, if everything, if anything ever comes to you and says, you know what, that doesn't sound right. Just reach out to a teacher, reach out to us. Uh, I know that Parent Square has been a hugely successful rollout this year. Uh, we've been utilizing it for our weekly messages. We've been utilizing it for, for a lot of things. So don't be nervous about tonight and then don't be nervous about upcoming middle school. So introductions, I am Bill Pickock. I'm the principal here at Westland Middle School. This is my, or will be my sixth year next year as principal and it'll be my 15th year at Westlane, and it'll be my 22nd year overall teaching. And uh, here's my assistant principal, Ms. Barber. Hi, everyone. I'm um, Laura Barber. This is my second year as the assistant principal at Westlane and my 25th year in teaching. So, uh, and the majority of it has been in middle school. It's just an age that I, I love, and I, I can't let you know how much I agree with what Mr. Pickock said about holding. Um, your kids closer as they get into sixth grade because they will need a little bit more support. Now it's just going to be us two tonight because uh, we are in the process of hiring a another assistant principal and for next year as well because of the the generosity of the community to pass the referendum in 2020 we are also getting a behavior dean and we're also getting a third counselor and the third counselor is going to be new with your students just like um, they're going to be new to the building. And so your kids really won't know the difference that this person has or hasn't been there for many of the years. So you guys, we're going to be supporting of both the sixth grade counselors and uh, the sixth grade students. And then actually this counselor will loop with them all the way to eighth grade. So they will get to know your students very well because we think three years is a lot, but in just, you know, in the blink of an eye, they're seventh graders. And then in another blink of an eye, you're having the same meeting, but it's with Mr. Brannigan at the high school and you're getting ready to select courses. Yeah. And I, I think that our eighth graders this year and parents were telling me like, I did not think this day would come and it's here. Okay. So, and middle school is so quick. I know, you know, you go through six years from K to five of elementary and then the middle school just, it zips by and the changes in your, in your children will be massive. Uh, like, like, even just from day to day. Like when we went uh, into 100% virtual this last fall, we came back, there were so many students just taller than us in just, a, in just a, a four month window. And the students just grow, develop, they become more mature, both emotionally and physically. Uh, and so this is just a time of just great change. And the difference between a sixth grader and an eighth grader is staggering, but the fact that they still get, they still all respond to strong relationships. And that's really what our staff looks to build each year uh, with their different group of students. But like I said, though, with a, with a counselor able to be that conduit when they come, when they continue to progress through seventh and eighth grade um, from sixth grade is going to be very exciting. And I, I'm always excited to talk to sixth grade parents. I'm always excited to have sixth graders come in the building because they're so adorable. They don't know where they're at. Um, they get completely turned around the building. They hold up they're scheduled to me like they just trust us and we're like, okay, let's walk you to your class. And so it's just a, it's a real fun time to kind of have them kind of start to try to figure out where they're going. And, um, but still with a guiding hand though, that's the thing we, they do have more freedom, but that the first couple months is always with a guide and like with, we're walking students to class and, and they ask us like, wait, don't you have to be a line leader? I'm like, no, we kind of walk on our own. Uh, we still walk on the right, but we kind of give you, the freedom to, to, you know, to walk around and to get to your classes on time. So that's kind of something that we really push our kids to start to learn a little responsibility and, and uh, the ability to um, get to their classes on time. So without further ado, I'm going to start our presentation. And again, if you have any questions, put it right in the Q&A and then we'll go through and ask that. I'm going to end the polling. It looks like the uh, 40 for 59 percent to 41 percent we are the first middle school experience that you're going to have well i'm going to tell you you're going to love it here at Westlane middle school and those of you who had kids go through middle school you know that you're going to love it here at Westlane middle school so mm -hmm. all right here we go let me go ahead and share my screen let's go over to here let's 
go to right here. And this is it. All right, so welcome to Westlane Future Wildcats. So we are the Westlane Wildcats. Our colors are blue and uh, royal blue and silver. And kind of we sometimes get in the navy, not a whole lot, but sometimes every once in a while we'll, we'll sell some navy shirts. We will also sell sometimes in our bookstore a lot of spirit wear, uh, different things that say Westlane. And we also have a huge bookstore that sells school supplies, whatever you need them. And over the summer too, uh, we will also tell you all the school supplies you need and you're going to hear from me quite a bit. This will be the first time that we start communication about your sixth grader, but it won't be the, it will not even mm. be close to being the last time that we communicate with you. All right, so who, who are we? We are uh, in sixth grade, we're going to have approximately 260 students and approximately 10 core level grade level teachers. Okay, so we also have electives, we'll have music teachers and we'll have um, uh, media center specialists and, and product lead the way teachers and language teachers. But so on there, in their core of uh, math, uh, English language arts, social studies and science, and then also um, PE and reading, or the, they will have about 10 core teachers. You're gonna have eight classes each semester plus your advisory. Some of those, of course, are year-long courses. So let's talk about some of the classes you'll take next year. So first off are the required classes. We have math, and I'll talk more about that later. Science, language and literature, and I think we'll call these English language arts next year. You'll have two classes. You'll have an A class and a B class. Individual societies, which are social studies, and I believe we'll call that social studies next year because uh, we are not continuing the MYP program next year, so we'll be able to go back to um, our terminology for those courses. Then you'll have a music. You will select either choir, orchestra, or band. Now our music teachers are coming to visit here in just a couple weeks, and you'll be selecting the instruments. I think we'll do some modified try-ons because of course we know we're still in the midst of COVID, but we'll do some modified try-ons for each student, and then they will select uh, one of their required music. Again, it's choir, orchestra, or band. And we have phenomenal teachers at all three levels. You're going to really enjoy meeting Ms. May, Mr. Nickerson, and Ms. Martin. We also have you take one Exploring World Language, uh, one semester of that. So you're going to take a mixture of Spanish and French. Mm -hmm. We're going to take what's called a course called Pre-Avid. Now, West Lane is an avid uh, showcase school. We're the only showcase school in Indiana and AVID stands for advancement by uh, individual determination. It's really a course to help students become the best versions of themselves. And so when uh, every sixth grader will take pre-AVID course and that really helps them with a number of different skills, speaking skills, organization skills, how to take notes, how to read critically, how to, uh, how to write critically, how to think critically, um, more is it's, it's really then our AVID program really make sure that you have the skills necessary to whatever you do post high school because this program goes from seventh grade all the way to 12th grade and so post high school regardless of what you go into whether it be um, some apprenticeships college junior college uh, trade schools it does not matter you'll have the skills necessary for um, for whatever you decide to go into and our AVID program uh, preaches the WICOR model, which is writing, inquiry, collaboration, organization, and reading. And so the pre-AVID is just a semester class that we kind of condense in here and we kind of help you see through that. And it's really been a huge success for our sixth graders, even if they don't go in our AVID program. Like imagine getting better as a sixth grader at public speaking. Imagine getting be able to organize our binders and organize our thoughts. Like that's been a real success here at West Lane and across the district. Every student does this. And so we're able to uh, be glad to offer this pre avid class for our sixth graders. Then we're gonna have a project lead the way for a semester, which is that is a, a design course in which our product lead the way teachers, uh, Mr. King and Mr. Doss teach kind of a computer modified semester. And then when you become seventh and eighth graders, you're allowed to take the uh, either robotics or coding as a as a seventh and eighth grader and then there's also some computer applications 
and also design and design to go with robotics. But the Project Lead the Way is kind of a, a cool computer technology course, kind of an engineering course to be able to um, utilize your first year. And you will love though you'll love that class. You'll love those two teachers. Mm -hmm. um, I could, like just everything here that I've gone over, you're gonna love the teachers you've run into here at Westlane. I really cannot talk about them enough. They've been so great over the years that you're just, again, you're just gonna love them. Hey, Mr. Pickock. Yes. I'm sorry, just, I, this is a good question in the chat and I'm not exactly sure I know that answer. Will be how will students who are currently virtual be able to select and fit their instrument? Excellent uh, question. We're going to have to work through that. So we'll have to, I know there is um, at each grade level, I mean, I'm sorry, at each school, we have at least one virtual section. Mm -hmm. So we're going to reach out to that virtual teacher and then we'll go ahead and set up at least a time for you to maybe look at instruments. Um, and so also too, we'll work with your uh, administrators there at the elementary schools, at, at, like I said, Cricket Creek, um, Fox Hill and half of uh, Willow Lake. But also I think we've got a few, like we have one student coming from Nora and one student coming from Spring Mill. We'll work with you on that to get those fitted and actually be able to see that. That's a great question though. Mm -hmm. And then you also have physical education for one semester. You will love Miss, like I keep saying this, but you're gonna love Miss Smith's PE class. Mm -hmm. um, like I know we've had teacher shout outs and, and students are like, oh, Miss Smith is, she was my PE teacher and now she's my friend and we just, we, we love her, we miss her because we had her first semester. Again, you can say that about all the teachers here uh, that you're gonna have. And then we also have a class called advisory. We'll have that every morning for half an hour. It's kind of like your morning meeting, homeroom. Uh, we go over a lot of social emotional learning. Uh, we use second step here uh, as a, so our social emotional learning. And also, we also utilize a program called IXL. I think some of you might be familiar with that. We have what we call diagnostic IXL dance parties, and it's not really as fun as you, <laughs> as that sounds, uh, but we work on our diagnostic IXL because that works on some skills that you don't necessarily have on grade level. That could be something like, hey, um, I'm having problems with just long division, and it works on that with you on a skill. So it takes the skills that you're not so, so strong at or you need to improve, and it really works with you on that. And so we, we try to jazz the call it diagnostic IXL dance party. Our kids don't buy it in the sixth, seventh, eighth grade, but we do do it. And I will tell you this, it really starts to show tremendous growth uh, academically in those areas of both reading and math. So um, just buy into the dance party. You'll enjoy it. We play a little song and we dance a little bit on announcements. And so then and we just go from there. So All right, so we have eight classes a semester, plus the advisory. Uh, we have advisory every day. And we have five out of our eight classes each day. Okay, and I'll show you how that works our next slide. Here we go. So I'm gonna minimize, I'm gonna move up. No, oh, I'm gonna minimize this, because we're in the way. Here we go. So here you see from 920 to 950 is advisory, again, every day. And then we have in the very first start, now this is going to be a familiar term to a lot of you from the elementary is what we call win time. It's whatever I need. And this originally was on a Wednesday, but we decided to move it to a Monday because it would also help us get academically started for the week. We could put in some organizational pieces in here and we could work on uh, some of the skills that we need as a middle schooler. Now the, uh, this is win time is also in your advisory class. But as you get to know your teachers and get to know what you need, you'll be able to kind of move around classes. Like if I need help in social studies, I'll be able to go to my social studies teacher for that help. Then we'll start our one through eight classes. You see here, our classes are roughly 64 minutes. Um, we have lunch here on, um, right in this middle part of the day. And we do eat um, with all three grade levels. We kind of divide you into three and then we put you in different levels and we're gonna be eating in our new cafetorium. Uh, right now, it's like, that's a little, that's the front building that was built out of West Lane. If you've driven by with the big curtain window, we'll be eating in there next year uh, as they finish up our cafeteria and cafetorium. So this also shifts each day when you have a class. So you might have period one right here and then you might have the next day period one 
at the end of the day. Now this may look a little bit confusing, but trust me, you'll pick it up because everybody will be going to the same place that you are in terms of classes. So we have each class three times a week and you see sometimes it's in a row, sometimes it's not, um, but you will, will go through it. And so your schedule will come one through eight and then you let us know like right here is my first period class and here is my second. And then it says down here, turn in laptops. That was an old thing we did last year. You will be taking laptops home next year. I'm not certain you do that in fifth grade, um, but we will be taking our laptops home each evening. So it's important to make sure you bring the computers charged to school each day. And sometimes too, we also ask you to bring your charger just in case if you forgot to charge it. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit in the math, possible math classes for each student. Um, so uh, Ms. Ms. Campbell is our de math department chair and possible math class, and this is, it really depends on what placement is gonna be for our math for next year. Uh, depending on your COGAT scores and those, you know, I'll talk about honors here in just a little bit. So we have math six is what most students are gonna take. And then the next year they take math seven. And then the eighth grade year, they take pre-algebra. And so that'll get them ready for algebra at the high school. Some students who qualify, or most students who qualify for math 6X will then take pre-algebra their seventh grade year. And then they'll take algebra their eighth grade year and then take geometry at the high school. Then there are even a fewer kids who will take pre-algebra, uh, depending on what their scores are. They'll take pre-algebra their sixth grade year, algebra their seventh grade year, and then they'll take geometry as an eighth grader and then move into algebra two as a high schooler. So those are the possible math tracks for uh, any student coming in and that will really be dependent on testing. I know we don't have a lot of data this year, but I know the COGAT's being given and some other algebra readiness tests are also being given. So we have an English, English and reading department here and that's Mrs. Themes. Uh, those, if, the, if I have any parents here who have actually gone to West Lane, Mm -hmm. These same Mrs. Themes that has been here since I think she said 1984. So she's excited to again, she still loves coming in every day and, and teaching sixth graders. And so the language and literature or English class that focuses on the writing process, inferring skills, critical thinking, and novel study. Now I do want to say this for those of you who are filling out the Eng the application for honors. For English, it does mention science and social studies. There, there aren't any science and social studies uh, classes for honors as a sixth grader. You will apply for those as a sixth grade student. And actually, that's what our sixth grade students are doing right now. They're also applying for AVID at this time right now as well. So it's, this is an important time for our students who are in school. But if you see an English application that mentions honors, uh, science and social studies, ignore that part. You're really just applying for the English honors class that we have here at Westline. So the reading part of this, so you have this, you have a language, you have the English class twice. So you have ELA 6A, which is the writing piece, and you have ELA 6B, which is the reading place. And this is focused on reading at your lexile levels and strategies to use when reading a variety of texts. So this really starts to teach you the how to read and how to read critically. Mm -hmm. So the individual societies, like we talked about um, uh, for social studies is our department chair is Mr. Brewer. And it's this great focus for, for each of you is the ancient cultures and, and world history. So ancient Greece and Rome, the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, revolutions and, and world wars, and then a little bit of South America. Again, there's no honors in sixth grade. Uh, what we have is a, again, a placement application for you to fill out as a sixth grader and then we determine that um, for the seventh grade class. One big thing we do is National History Day, and that's an independent research on something that we, like we give it like, uh, I think two years ago was like, what's a problem you'd like to solve? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of research problems throughout history and you do independent historical research on that. And it is part of the, I, the old IB design curriculum, but we are gonna make it something that we still keep doing because it's a fun time for you to start to learn how to um, research and how to get better at like finding out about historical uh, historical pieces. And here, I think a sixth grader here, she won our competition two years ago, but she's now a, a seventh grader, so or eighth grader. So two years ago, she won 
And then I think she went on to uh, semi-state at IUPUI. So we also have a science class every day in, our, in your schedule. And, and so sixth grade science, you're going to learn about life science, astronomy, and physical science. So you're going to learn a lot about uh, simple machines. You're going to learn about, a lot about the planets. You're going to learn about invasive species. You're going to learn about animals and plants that kind of grow in and around Indiana and throughout the world. So this is just a real fun time. And I'm speaking of that as a former science teacher, um, that my favorite was always teaching astronomy. And so that's a real cool, again, learning about the planets, learning about the stars and how to see them. And, and just the history of that is so cool. And then physical science, you're going to love. Uh, you're going to love to make simple machines, trebuchets, um, flipping things, like learning how about potential and kinetic energy. You're just going to love it. Um, I think I sold it enough. I think I sold them enough, right, Ms. Barber? I'm not that yeah. science wise. <laughs> Can I ask you real quick? I've had a couple questions just about a little more details with regards to what makes the um, honors classes honors. Uh, oh, what can they expect yes. for their kids? All right, so it's a little, the honors classes alone are a little bit more in depth in the class, a little more complex. So, where you might see uh, the writing is a little more complex, a little bit deeper themes. I know they definitely read different novels, or at least the, um, they get to choose their novels. There's a little bit more uh, depth in those novels, maybe linked. We don't want to say it's, it's more, it's not more homework. It's not like an eight page essay versus a, uh, you know, a five page essay or anything like that, but it's just a little bit more complexity. It's a little bit more uh, depth of knowledge where we might go into application more than just comprehension in those honors classes uh, where we might ask the students to do more complex work. Like, you're not just writing about a problem, you're writing about a possible solution and brainstorming and, and, and doing some of that uh, work that you need to be doing for the honors class. And then the reading again, a little more in depth of novel study where you might be expected to um, read a, an extra novel. And again, that might be getting into more, but I, I think the a more in-depth novel study um, at your level. And so I think when that, we talk about that with the honors, it's just a, a level of complexity. It's not a level of length. We don't say to give, you know, the honors class, you know, four pages of homework where we give only two other places. No, it's just really the complexity of it to where you might have to think a little more deeply. You might have to put in a little bit more um, effort into the, into kind of making sure you're, you're doing a, a real a good job of just maybe explaining and more discussion, those kind of pieces where, where, you know, it might not be that academic expectation of, as complex in the other classes. Yeah. Any other questions on the Q&A? Nope, we're good. All right. So there is social design technology. We won't call it in IV, but there's no honors and there's strong differentiation. Again, also too, in both science and social studies, we will have high school elective options when you turn into seventh and eighth grade. And that is gonna be, so what that is, you get life science, uh, environmental studies, Current, current events, uh, you learn about all the social studies disciplines, social sciences, and uh, we also have a social justice class as a seventh grader and eighth grader as well. Um, so again, that honors program will happen as well. The honors will have, the honors application will happen next uh, March. Everybody also gets PE and health and there is a uniform for that. You do not have to purchase a uniform, although it's strongly recommended because it is just a, it's a, it's really the first gear you might get for Westlane. And we do encourage parents of young men. We do encourage that they try to get this home and washed um, every At week, once a week, every week. <laughs> um, there is some times where we've gone into the locker room and we've not adhered to that. Um, but we really do at this time, we really do say like, Hey, um, you know, you, you want to get a uniform. It is, like I said, the first way it's a, pair of blue shorts and a gray Westlane t-shirt. I think it's $17 total uh, for the package. And we have those on sale at our bookstore and at our um, schedule pickup that we will have this year. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I think everything's gonna be kind of back to more normal in, in, in late July, early August for us to do this. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about world language. You're gonna have nine weeks of Spanish and nine weeks of French. 
and it's going to be in that whole semester. So whatever semester you have an introduction to world languages at, you're going to have both French and Spanish in some kind of um, pattern. You may have French first, you may have Spanish first. You're going to be exposed to the language as well as some of the culture, and then you're going to pick one to continue learning in seventh and eighth grade. So once you've been exposed to it, it used to be we had our sixth graders pick before they ever got here a world language and then you sign to get into it and you're like i don't like this or it's, it's something i don't really want to know more about so at least this point we actually give you a little bit of a taste of both languages you get to meet both the teachers and you get to decide which one am i going to go into for the next year okay so we have way more spanish um, uh, classes than we do french but it's really an option you can like i said once you've learned about it you get to make and um, you get to kind of make the decision as seventh graders, what is going to be my line of study. So when you then leave West Lane, you will actually have been tested out of level one of the language and you'll be able to go into level two language as an, as a ninth grader. So although we don't have a credit for it, you will, it'll take me a class you can take away when you get to the to North Central. Now, music and performing arts. We have choir, orchestra, and band. And these are year-long commitments uh, for this. Now, we say they're year-long. They're year-long in sixth grade. They're year-long in seventh grade. They're year-long in eighth grade. We do not require you to continue after sixth grade into the um, either uh, choir, orchestra, or band. And we don't, but we, once you do make that selection, you are in there for the year. And I will tell you what, I know I've said this about every other course, we have the finest music program in, in, in middle schools and here in Washington Township. Mm -hmm. um, now the high school is, is consistently state champions in choir, orchestra, and band. And I would say that, our, I would say our middle school, um, our middle school program, especially, you know, with the, well, especially Ms. May and the band, I'm not saying don't do orchestra because Mr. Mr. Nickerson is also an excellent teacher. I would say though that our music programs at the middle school here at West Lane and probably at Eastwood Northview too could rival some smaller high schools. Absolutely. On how good they on how good they have they how good they are. I mean, I, it is. I'm telling you, um, the performing level. You when you walk by and, and again too, parents, you got to be patient as sixth graders. Okay, <laughs> because there's going to be a lot of squeaks and squawks. And a lot of missed mm -hmm. strings and and a little bit pitchy music as sixth graders. We're learning. And and yep. we always say when I walk by the music classes early on, it's 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 a little rough. But then when I we have our first recital in November, you're like, that's pretty good. That song sounds like how it's supposed to sound like. Sounds and then like at the end of the year, at the end of the year, it's fantastic. And then when they can become eighth graders, you can be jazz band. I mean, oh, it's, it's tremendous. Yeah. Again, there's such a high quality of, of uh, musicianship here in the township that I know it's expected, but also I think our middle schools really do a good job of preparing for a real high level of musicianship. And I think also too, for orchestra and band, you should know that if you already play an instrument, um, you can come in on that instrument. You may, you know, we may even, I think there have been always a few kids. We've actually put it in a different level of band because you already know how to play. Um, but also too, if you already have an instrument, just tell them, I'm going to play this. And we, we also have options for private tutoring. Miss May and Mr. Nickerson raised a lot of money to be able to do that. And then we have uh, for sixth graders, a concert, like I said, the recital is going to be in November and then the end of the year concert in May. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be able to have those next year in our brand spanking new cafetorium. Awesome. And, with, and again, if you ever drive by West Lane, look at the big window wall. And that's where our cafetorium is going to be. Right now, it was, it, it's temporary walls for temporary classrooms, but those are getting taken out. We'll be able to eat there and play music in there. And it's really going to be a cool thing for our performing arts. All right, so choir, there are two evening performances like I talked about in the sixth grade year. You get to learn. Um, an intro to singing and, and beginning choreography. You learn a variety of music and then you have Township Choral Festival in alternate years, which I think next year we might move that back into that because it's supposed to be one this year and we didn't have it. And then there's, all, and there's always that participation in half notes at North Central annually in the spring. 
or orchestra, you learn to play the violin, viola, cello, and string bass, and you learn how to play, read music. Again, there's two performances in sixth grade year, and you can get a head start at summer orchestra camp, and that's offered at North Central in July. And finally, band, learn to play the flute, oboe, bassoon, clarinet, bass clarinet, trumpet, French horn, trombone, baritone slash euphonium, kind of a smaller tuba, or a tuba. Mm -hmm. You learn, to, you learn to read music, music theory, and perform, and you can get a head start on the summer band camp, which is offered at North Central in June. And they'll be reaching out again with Parent Square uh, when we do those performances. And again, those are also two performances during sixth grade, which is one November recital, and then a May end of the year concert. And so when you also decide what you're going to pick, if you go to msdwtmusic.com, you will actually have a spreadsheet in which you can fill out your instrument that you're gonna choose. And we also will have it written down this year too. Last year, I know we had to do a lot of this online. Whereas this year we'll be able to, like I said, visit the elementary schools and um, have you choose your music. Pre-Avid, of course, we talked about this before, but in this course, you learn the importance of, of organization, gaining experiences with critical reading, note-taking, higher level thinking, and public speaking skills. And pre-AVID helps you become a better version of you. And I will say this too, if you choose to go into the AVID program as a seventh grader, eighth grader, we do do a lot of college trips to prepare us for um, that college experience. And I will say this, if you do stick with it for six years as a senior, uh, that our senior classes for just AVID bring in millions of dollars each year for uh, scholarships. And so that is a, uh, something that's really exciting as well. We don't go on any college trips as sixth graders unless you count our IU and Purdue science trips. Um, but we do, again, have those as seventh and eighth graders. All right, the next one we talked about is innovation exploration, product lead the way. We learn about STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics through project-based learning. Again, that's with Mr. King and Mr. Doss. You learn how the different branches work together to make our world safer. And we explore engineering through a set of projects. And that again, has been a really fun, like I go into those classes sometimes and those kids are just having a blast uh, making things through uh, product-based learning. So let's talk a little bit about how your academic success is going to happen. It will depend on the, really the following three. Now there's a lot more to this. However, if you can get these three right, you will be on target. So first off, your organization. You're gonna have a locker, you're gonna have a binder, you're gonna have an agenda book to help keep you organized. For time management, you're gonna to wanna to get your daily homework done and large projects done uh, as soon as possible. And we're also gonna um, learn how to study. And that's different from doing homework. That's how to really take notes, go back to the notes, read notes, and help uh, kind of guide your way through uh, studying for those classes. And also to your new counselor. So you're going to be able to like your school counselor, you're going to do a couple different things. Number one, it's going to be a school guidance person. So it's going to be academic success skills and career exploration. And we're going to do that for sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Individual student planning. So you got your personal goals and planning already for careers at college. So we actually talk about as an eighth grader, and starting all the way down to sixth grade, what you might want to do after high school, we don't lock you into it, but we do have a couple of different areas for you to watch and look. And then we also offer individual and group counseling. Uh, we also have a consultation with parents or teachers and other professionals. And we also have referrals to school support services or community resources. Now I know those of you who have possible Cummins uh, counseling at the elementary school that continues on here with our counselor at the middle school our actual Cummins uh, counselor here, we have two, we have a life skills person and an actual Cummins therapist that you will be able to she'll kind of hand off to our person. And also too, the big role of the counselor is also for scheduling. They handle all the class, make sure you have all the classes you need on your schedule. And they kind of do the, if there's ever a schedule change, they kind of have those, they make those schedule changes. Lockers. Now you are going to be a lucky group of sixth graders. You are actually going to have two sets of lockers. You're going to have the first set down in the South gym with the temporary classrooms and those are going to have a different combination. 
And then as the sixth grade wing opens in November, you're gonna have the next set of lockers. It is super easy um, how to open the lockers. And so it's really, I've always said, go, get, go to the dollar store and get a combination lock and practice that. It's really a rhythm, it's not the numbers. Like the numbers don't matter at all. It's the process of how they open the lockers. And so once you learn how to write left, right, it, everything else is beautiful. Um, the teachers will be able to open your locker with the key. So if you ever get stuck or you're ever getting flustered and the bell's about to ring or the, I've got to get to the bus, your teacher will, in emergency, open up that locker with a key. And we always do say this, let the teacher help you open and don't share your combination with anyone, not even your best friend. Okay, so it's just important to keep your combination to yourself. There are some of you who will be fortunate enough to, if you're in PE and you're in band or orchestra, you'll have three locker combinations starting off the school year. Again, make sure you write them down. Uh, but again, too, I'd always say practice with a lock over the summer. All right, let's talk a little bit about athletics, clubs, and activities. Uh, so first off, before we say anything else, anybody who participates in athlete athletics must have a 2.0 or better GPA, and that is a what we call a C average. So if you give every grade a point value system, like an A is a four, a B is a three, a C is a two, a D is a one, and an F is a zero, you have to average a C or better to participate in all the following activities. Academic pursuit, science Olympiad, robotics, dance team, and intramurals. But we also have athlete, athletics. And I might say this, we might, should I give it away a little bit, Ms. Barber? Like some give of it away. Them out? Go These ahead. used to be the sports, and that's still currently the rule, is you can just try out for these sports. So cross country in the fall, that's a no-cut sport. That's running. Um, tennis for boys, and that's a cut sport in the fall. Winter is a wrestling. Um, runner's wrestling. That's usually a no-cut. Spring is track, and that's usually no-cut as well. And then we have tennis for girls, and that's usually a cut sport. I will say this, that we've talked to the MIC athletic directors. That's the, that's the conference that we're in. And we're trying to convince, I think the, we're trying to convince each other to allow sixth graders um, to redo our teams to where we have an A team and a B team instead of an eighth grade team and a seventh grade team. And so then on an A team, it would be eighth graders and seventh graders. And on a B team, it would be seventh graders and sixth graders maybe. So you may be able to participate in every sport next year, including, um, except for football, right? They didn't say football, right? Yeah, uh, yeah I don't think football. Yeah, no football, that's just, but if, that's you're, a safety issue. if you're good enough in the other sports, including basketball, now basketball, if you, if you want to try out for a B team and, and think you're good enough, try out. But basketball is a very competitive cut sport uh, in both boys and girls, but you, you will be allowed to probably try out now. Again, nothing official. I didn't want, I'm, not, I'm just telling you what we're probably going to go to. And we'll be able to talk about that more when we start the school year and have those call outs. But that also includes volleyball in the spring for girls or fall for girls. Um, that includes what? Baseball, softball in the fall or in the spring for, for boys and girls. And again, basketball, try out um, and just see what happens. I don't know if you would be or not be um, on, get, be able to get on that basketball team. But that's, that's coming down the pike. And so just make sure you're listening for that. And we'll, again, give that information out about getting physicals. You have to have a 2.0 or a better GPA and a completed physical uh, that happens after April 1st. So if you do want to go out and get your student a physical now, I would actually wait because if it's after April 1st, it's good for the whole entire school year next year. If it's before, it only is good for a year. So if you get it today, it's only good till March 9th of 2022. So make sure you kind of wait till after April 1st to get a, a physical. Renovations, I'm gonna show you this and part of this is happening and part of this or has happened and part of this is going to happen. So I just wanna show you this uh, virtual tour of, the re of Westland after renovations. Here we go. Nope, let's go back one here. <laughs> There we go.
the front office is more to the side, so when students are walking around that area, it won't distract the visitors that are coming in and out. I think that's a really cool space to help kids show what they can do and like all the glass. It's really cool. My favorite part about the design is the second story because you get to be separated from the other grades. It's not going to be as small. Uh, I'm most excited about the bigger spaces and the second story for the eighth graders. I think it's going to be great that the classrooms are bigger and we can do more hands-on activities and we will have a lot more fun in the classrooms. I think the serving line is great because there won't be a bunch of people in one line getting squished. I like the cafeteria space, it's very open and larger and we have the place for like bands and things to be. I will say this, uh, the, that, like Miss Barbara, you would, I, I, I if you would agree here, that that's almost identical to what it looks like in most of the areas that are completed already. Yeah. The LGI is a little different, but. Yeah, they didn't take a, put that last wall on. And so right. it's more of an open space, but I, like, I don't like it open. Yeah. Yeah. I like it like, I like it the way it is. Yeah, I really do. Um, so between now and June and July, make sure you do the following things. Make sure you work on a combination lock. Make sure all emails and phone numbers are updated in both in Skyward because Skyward will feed Parent Square for us. Uh, make sure you have an accurate email for Skyward. Go ahead and download the Parent Square app and participate in all the Zoom meetings that we have. So uh, whenever we have a Zoom meeting, I think we'll have a um, in May we'll have a kind of get to know our teacher meeting. We'll kind of have them all on a Zoom just to to meet them and they'll be able to talk and they'll be able to ask questions. I know that the, uh, sometimes our students are able to come over and visit us in May where hope is still there for that to happen. But we do want to make sure if, we, if we're not able to do that, we will have Zoom meetings for parents to kind of meet the teachers prior to the end of the school year. And so here we go. Do we have questions about middle school West Lane Wildcats? I'll stop the share here. Thought I saw some things in the chat. I'm going to go to there first. Oh, never mind. You did it. You already answered those questions outstanding. Yeah, most of them are you. If they were really important, I stopped you and had to cover them. Most of them were simple about lockers and locks and um, just you know basic stuff like that. One parent has already been kind enough to buy two PE shirts, so <laughs> I was very happy about that. Question here: Is there cheerleading? Uh, now that's something we have not talked about. If there is, well, we may allow sixth graders to cheerlead. However, I will say this, a lot of our students who want to cheerlead get started on our award-winning dance team that's open to all three grade levels. And they, for the last two years, have made state in a very new program because we've only had the program for two years and they've made state in their age group both years. And they win awards all over the place. So we um, on that, we don't know about cheerleading for sixth grade, but we would say go out for the dance team. Yeah. Um, we had a question about our school hours. Oh, uh, excellent. Yeah. So yeah, we, yeah, we're 920 to 420. We are late, much later than our elementary. Uh, so we're, we go later in the building. Uh, we go, we go later, I'm sorry, later in the day. And we go, we go uh, much later in the morning as well. Someone asked about the diversity makeup of students and teachers. Excellent question. So we're about 47% African-American. We're about 30% Caucasian and about 22% um, uh, Hispanic or Latino uh, for the students. And then for the teachers, I believe we are 28% African-American. And then we're about 70, no, we're about 68% Caucasian. And then we've got, um, two or 3% of Hispanic. We have a few teachers who also speak Spanish on top of that. Uh, so we really pride ourselves on the diversity of both our staff and our students. And uh, we're really working 
again, to, to, to also we know too that it's important for our students to see teachers who look like them. And I think they do, they are able to do that. Um, and they are able to do that here at West Lane. Uh, oh, a great question here. Um, uh, do the, can the kids go to the counselor anytime? We do ask that they set up a, a, um, an appointment through, on westlanecounseling.com and they just kind of put in there like what level? Is it of problems? Is it a, a major problem they had to see a scene right now? Is it something we just want to be seen in the future or it's a scheduling issue? Um, that's pretty easy uh, to answer. And then do we have a chess club? Uh, no, if someone wants to. Um, I said no, but we can start one. We'll start one. Uh, if we have a student already attending, how do we get them involved in pre-avid? They should already be in pre-avid. Um, if they're not, it's because we're even either in an intervention or we have an IEP that we have to get different services. Who are the counselors? Uh, actually, right now, I cannot release his name as the sixth grade counselor because we haven't We've hired him, but we've got to go through the paperwork. So um, it is going to be a gentleman, hopefully, that we are able to move forward with. Um, but Ms. Patzel and Ms. Bostic are doing seventh and eighth grade. They'll be the seventh and eighth grade counselors next year. And so then they'll be, uh, Ms. Bostic next year will be, or two years from now, Ms. Bostic will be a sixth grade counselor. And then three years from now, Ms. Patzel will be in um, sixth grade. How do I put my student in honors? Uh, that'll be on during data and testing. I'd reach out to your elementary teacher and ask how that process goes because there'll be some testing and then we'll be looking at data here at the middle school. Um, it will be a little wonky this year because we don't have as much data as we normally do uh, to be looking at math honors classes. Oh, here's a really good one. What is one key advice you would give us parents to prepare the kids for sixth grade? I think knowing that we're going to be involved with a bunch of different people, you're going to meet a whole slew of new people, new teachers, new students. So making sure you're open to those meetings and open to those people um, to become, to build new friendships, uh, to strengthen existing friendships, to reach out to teachers. And one thing we tell them too, that's the, um, really start to advocate for yourself. It doesn't mean you have to do everything for yourself, but if you think, hey, my grade in this class is not so great, use Canvas and email the teacher. Just when we even teach the students how to email a teacher in such a way they're like, oh, dear Mr. or Miss So-and-so, I noticed my grade is not so great here. How would you suggest I improve it? Sincerely, your name, but really advocating for yourself like, oh, no, no, I want to take this class and not this class. I want to do this class and not this class. And so that's really what um, we'd really push the kids to start that advocacy, but also make sure you're open to the experience of meeting new people. How do you support students with special needs? Great question. We have a continuum of services here. So already, if your child is in a Washington Township school and has an IEP, our teachers will go over and or at least will on Zoom, have what we call transition conferences Mm -hmm. with the special ed teacher so we can learn more about them whether we have a continuum of services from paces program which is life skills to um, push in support to the er emotional disability program so we our teachers already have been in contact with your child's teacher at the elementary to have that meeting any idea if and when field trips will be part of the middle school experience again right here i think yes Mm -hmm. uh, every year we do try to go to a performance and every year we do try to go down to a park uh, at sixth grade and in seventh grade we have the camping trip in eighth grade we have the DC trip and so our right here is that we're able to do those all next year. That's a good question. How does How the email work? Yeah it's a great question. So what will happen next year depending on the level of, of your child's um, vocabulary either speaking reading or 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 listening, um, they'll either like if they are a beginning ENL, they will be put into a beginning ENL class. If not, uh, our ENL teacher will co-teach with their English teacher on one of the teams. And then also, if they need more support, they'll be 
uh, IAs wrapped around with them going to classes with them. Now, if they're level three and above on the WIDA score, then they'll be able to go and uh, on their own, but they'll have some, um, so they'll be able to touch base with their teacher, but also our teacher are going to be trained on how to best service our ELL students. I haven't seen in his schedule. Yeah, we won't see any schedules until July. Um, in fact, it'll be like probably July 23rd in which you will see a schedule for your sixth grader. And there aren't, and the only course selection uh, that we do will be just the music selection uh, for the student. Can they do soccer? If uh, we pass this, uh, if we pass this with the MIC, yes, they can try out for soccer. Um, when will all the renovations at the school be done and which renovation will be done at the start of the new school year? Our very next thing being done, at least from a standpoint of date, will be our cafetorium opening in August when you first get back. Then on November the 29th, or no, I'm sorry, November the 1st, you'll move back into sixth grade this is great pod and then we will take um, we'll start working on our media center our product lead the way classes our um, our uh, life skills program and then our world language area will be renovated and then finally when we'll be done totally will be probably october november of 2022 so right when they're in the middle of their seventh grade year we should be completely done here at west lane and I'm telling you right now, it is going to look like a brand new school, but it'll just be in the same spot that the old school was. So it's, and of course, if you haven't seen it yet, and you, that video didn't really do it justice, especially when you're so used to, um, used to that. How much interaction will the sixth graders have with seventh and eighth graders during the course of a normal day? Not much. There aren't a lot of classes they're with. Um, lunch maybe, but I will tell you this, I, I've, as, as being in middle school for forever, seventh graders don't really see the sixth graders um, as anyone they want to hand, you know, hang out with. And so there's not a lot of interaction and our kids are real nice to each other as far as different grade levels. Uniform for the girls, actually the uniform for boys and girls, exactly the same. It's just a gray t-shirt uh, with blue shorts and it's a, it's a whole bunch of sizes. We go from like youth small to like double X, triple X adult. So mm -hmm. and it's all the same, exact same uniform. Mm -hmm. um, when we get the schedule in July, is there the same time we'll get a school supply list? Actually, I'll try to get you a school supply list at the big, like at near the end of June. Um, that's easy to, cause we don't have it. Like we, we know your classes. We just don't know when your classes are taking place. So we can, we're able to give you a school supply list to, um, be able to understand what you need to have for each student. Hey, there's been a couple questions about visiting. Obviously, that's a big, a big concern about visiting. Our hope, our hope is that we're able to bring the sixth graders over from their elementaries in May. If that's not able to happen, I do anticipate being able to do what's called Wildcat Safari. On um, Wildcat Safari is when we bring all the sixth graders in to talk and we show them their areas and we also bring parents in to talk and I, that, I give you my message of not being nervous and we kind of walk you through what the year is going to look like. And, um, and so uh, uh, that's kind of hope. Our hope is to be able to visit uh, in again, the kids in May and then again, back again in uh, late July with our Wildcat Safari. The replay here will be posted on our Westlane Middle School page. We're going to have it front and center and I will, I will also send it out to Parent Square like I did now. So if you're at West Lane and you missed it, here's the, here's the replay. Uh, for honors, we'll be getting emails about getting in soon. If not, what's the timeline? Um, I do believe that right now they're just, they're just started. I don't believe you're going to get letters or, <coughs> excuse me, communication until um, late April. And because we are going to require, at least for math, we're going to require those students take some summer school. Um, to practice up on their math, where the English answers might become sooner rather than later. We don't have an exact timeline on that because we're, we're running a kind of a different, um, running a different program this year about being able to application, being an application piece. Uh, anything about art, uh, artistically talented, you can join artistically talented, but art is not in a sixth graders, um, art's not in the sixth grade. Uh, this year. However, 
Uh, we do a lot of STEAM work. So when, when you're talking about like STEM with art, there are a lot of artistic projects that we do in both science and social studies and, and different courses to where they can express themselves artistically. If you still have a talented kid though, artistically, have them sign up for Artistically Talented with Mr. Reynolds. Uh, we also have talked about maybe rotating um, some advisories into with, with doing some art stuff, but the art, they actually can sign up for when they get older in seventh grade and eighth grade, they can sign up for art and advanced art, which is kind of that art appreciation and just some uh, more mm -hmm. uh, ex uh, expressive things. And so really this year is the first year we ran it and it was great. <clears throat> Do you explain again how the COGAT will play into my son's sixth grade schedule? Um, really, it will determine whether or not they're in honors in the math class. Uh, English, and well, also it will determine English as well. And uh, I think that um, that data will be uh, analyzed by our coaches and counselors uh, into the, um, the honors program. I've seen a lot of things about schools doing a four day week. Is that something we might be moving forward to see a new school year? No, I hope not. I wanna go five days. I wanna see everybody, everybody's smiling faces. Hopefully we are, our herd immunity with vaccines are, are clear and we'll be in Monday through Friday. That, there's never been any talk, uh, at least from our standpoint, we've, we've only been going four days because we've been doing some training and we're getting, actually we're getting our students back next week, um, four days a week. Here's some, how many classes do we get? So you get eight. You get eight per semester. And some of them are year long and some of them switch and out. Our schedule, it's kind of like a block, but um, we have it so we see um, five classes a day rather than four. So a different version of a block. So you see all your classes three times rather than one week two and one week three. This time you see them all for three times. And it's all week inclusive. And so it really was working well for us last year until we went, until we shut down. Um, soccer, yes, that should be something you can try out for. You may be cut, but if, if you're good enough to play, then we'll keep you on the team. For artistically talented, um, Mr. Reynolds, when you'll hear the announcements for that. So when it's, he puts out announcements to try out or sign up, just sign up. The school schedule, you can find the calendar on the district website. Um, so that's where you can find that. And then we'll push out the, the weekly calendar as we get closer to school. Yeah, I push out a weekly calendar and I try to push out a long-term calendar for you to see different things that are coming up. All right, man, these have been some great questions, Ms. Barbara. I'm not, I don't know about, like, these have been excellent questions. Um, well, what I'll tell you one thing is I know we have clearly have students that want to be an artistically talented. So that's awesome. And they want to play sports. Oh, here we go. Uh, sixth graders be able to pick their own locker. No, we just assign them to you. It's a pretty simple process. And if you already know what language you would want to do, would you still want to learn the other, have to learn the other language? Yes. One of the things about sixth grade is we want to give you a very broad um, set of experiences. And uh, that's kind of what we want to, we want to make sure you get to, to see everything that we might have uh, mm -hmm. here at Westland because it may change your mind. Yep. Like you might come in saying, I have people come in saying, I'm going to do French. And then they all of a sudden love Spanish. Boy, we got some lot of soccer players in this group. So yeah, soccer <laughs> next fall. So, soccer will be available next fall. We don't do it. We will, and we will send out the messages to make sure you understand yep. which soccer goes. We will not leave you uninformed. It's because they're getting ready to play, start playing rec soccer. That's yeah, they want to do yeah, they want to do that. So I love it. I love it. Uh, our sixth grade, our sixth grade is ready to go. In fact, they have, if I open up the school tomorrow for them, they'd want to come in tomorrow. But yes, um, enjoy now. I will say this as I as we end the night, enjoy being in fifth grade. Be the best fifth grader you can be, and then we will again we will take care of you when you get here in August as a sixth grader. And we actually someone asked we don't end the and start at the same time. Right. Artistically Talented is an after school program and sometimes a before school program. And sometimes during advisory. Yes, yeah, sometimes during advisory. <laughs> you will choose what you want to speak as a seventh grader. Also, too, uh, I know there's some students on here. I will be, and Ms. Barbara, Ms. Barbara and I will be coming into your classrooms via Zoom here the week before spring break to be able to talk to you and answer any questions there, too. So. And I might email the teachers and say, hey, um, 
you know, have some questions ready. There's a question about PTO Ooh. in the chat. Yeah, so we will actually have a PTO call out for fifth graders probably near to the end of this year. Um, so we will be able to um, uh, talk, you know, we'll be able to have a quick call out. I think we already have like eight or nine PTO um, members and some mm -hmm. young. Usually we usually have like a bunch of eighth grade parents and they're always moving out on us. And so now we have uh, super young kids uh, in our PTO. So we're hoping for good, great, great things with our PTO. Our volleyball teams are pretty good. I mean, we have actually had a really good volleyball program. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and end now. I think that last question was a good one. We have a very successful athletic program here at West Lane. And um, um, I'm very proud of it as the principal. I'm very proud of our athletics, our academics, our uh, music program, our art program. I mean, it, it's just like this is a great place to be, and we can't wait to see you here coming in at the beginning of next school year. But we'll, again, we'll keep communicating with you all mm -hmm. along the way. Yep. So thank you, everybody. We appreciate you for taking your time out and coming tonight. And we will see you in the future. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night.